Give us a, a pulse check on how the mainland property sector is doing right now. If it comes to the residential market, I have to say the worst has already passed us. Uh, sentiment is definitely coming back uh, in 2023. However, as you mentioned earlier, on, there's a, such a bifurcated performance. What we are noticing that is margins across all the developers is trending down. For the, those developers with tier one cities coverage, more diversified portfolios, they will outperform. The outperform is going to be a lot stronger than wider average. If you talk about smaller median sizes, also the bigger coverage in the regional cities, unfortunately, they are going to continue to be sluggish. When you are looking at the major developers the, in the SOE background, they are going to take the chance to increase their LTV ratios, leverage ratios, in order to do more MMA opportunities. So consolidation is, is, is something we need to watch on the residential sectors. Okay, in terms of residential, mm -hmm. it used to be one of the big developers, mm -hmm. Evergrande. Uh, we got a little bit of a debt restructuring plan that was announced a couple weeks back, but we are still waiting on the results. They said indicated April, May maybe. Uh, that would still be for 2021 and not even uh, just the past year. In terms of Evergrande, the debt restructuring plans, uh, how do you assess that? I think uh, the restructuring is likely to continue when we are looking at overall market data for property developer debt. In 2023, we had the 200 billion debt to set to mature. The funding gap will continue to be there. And then we look at the refinance channels. I think for those offshore bonds, it's going to be super challenging. And the, the, the debt cost is not going to be cheap on the back of the U.S. Uh, rate has been hiked. So therefore, Probably we are going to see some default throughout the course of 2023, but we do not believe the market-wide collapse is likely to happen for that for 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 this yeah. time being. All right, Henry, that that's uh, that's good to know. Uh, how would you, if you take a step back and uh, and consider and take a look at the things that uh, the government has has already done to try and support uh, uh, the property uh, sector in China, how would you rate the, how would you evaluate the the success of those efforts and what more do you think they can or should be doing? I think as of now, you can see the sentiment is slowly and gradually moving back. However, it's, it's a full speed of recovery. It's too early to tell. I think the government is trying to support the lendings from the development point of view and also the lower the triple R rate the third time in a row since late last 2022. So therefore, it's all the policy they are trying to do is to stimulate the growth and also to support the residential sectors on that part. However, something we haven't talking about is the establishment of the REIT market. I think a few weeks, uh, last week, we see the REIT market is going to cover retail sectors, it's going to cover the affordable housing. As a result, something those developers are going to look at, you know, potentially to IPO some of the assets for residential, for, for, for retail assets in order to enhance their balance sheet. So REIT uh, development is something we need to watch out for.